Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Let's get loaded on the tune! Woo! Ah, the can you learned. Hands back, baby. You took the notes and you took the notes from the boss and you Yeah. Really good. Really good. It only took my wife to tell me that the bottle opener just wasn't the best way to go. <laughs> um I'm drinking a new craft beer. I think it's from France. Um Ugh. yeah, uh Lite. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um it's got a retro can. Um Hey, no free ads. Yeah, no free ads. Pretty good, though. Pretty good. It works. Everything you want, always want in a beer and less. All right. <laughs> and, and water. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, welcome to Loaded on Lansdowne, episode 83. Three. Episode 83. Wow, we're getting there, Andy. We're, we're I know. Moving right along. I mean, if this was a regular year, we'd be at a hundred, and and we'd have a we'd have a big party with masks on and no one there. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to that a little bit later on. All right, so welcome to uh, welcome to the podcast. Um, last time we were with you, the Red Sox uh, had dropped the series in Baltimore, which of course was uh, putrid. They had a great opening day, uh, and then uh, really nothing good happened after that. So the Red Sox have had, I you know. It, Technically, they've they've had two series, and one of them isn't even over. I mean, they they played the Mets at Fenway, and then they played the Mets at City Field, in, in you know, in uh, yeah, I mean that kind. Of, so yeah, but I, I I consider it I consider it a series against the Mets. It's a four game series against the Mets, regardless. Yeah. Of what it is. And now they're in the Bronx currently. So if you see us going, see me going like this, I'm I got the game on my TV over there. The game is currently going on. Although is MLB still doing the no retransmissions? Re, you know, are we gonna get in trouble for this? Are we gonna get sued for this, Andy? I hope so. Yeah, me too. I mean, good business. It would bring a lot, a lot of attention toward our. We'll fight the man. That's right. All right. So, uh, Red Sox play the Mets, and it was it was a literal mixed bag. Uh, they played two at Fenway. They played two at. Uh, you know, down in Flushings and down in Queens. Um, I caught odds and ends of this game. I've had a pre pretty busy week. My kids have been playing baseball and everything else. Andy, any takeaways from uh, from this series? Um, even when they won, it seemed like the pitching did its absolute damn damn to try to make sure they don't win. Right. Uh, I, I think I, – I've always thought this. I still think this. I think Matt Barnes sucks. <laughs> uh the first game they won when they were up what? They were up 5-2 or 6-2 going in the eighth. Barnes, and he hits he hits somebody, he walks somebody, loads the bases, gives up two runs. I mean, just like Workman gave up a run to make it a one-run game. It just it really, really trying to, to blow that game. That would, have been, that would have been five losses in a row. That would have been a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't the Wednesday game, I believe. That was the um, – uh, that was the Tuesday game, correct? That was the Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they bounce back. So they lose both. They lose both Mets games at Fenway. Oh, this. Oh, you know, the, the, they they start floating the bullshit that well, actually, being at home for the Red Sox is a negative because they're used to the Fenway crowd and and the energy they get from the Fenway faithful. So if they, they actually they'll be better on the road. You know, we didn't even talk about this pre-show. But I was gonna, I was gonna bring this up anyway. So this is amazing that you're bringing it up. Yeah. Do you think that's real? No. Because, because I, because I thought about it today, and I'm like, you know, do players on teams that have um, apathetic crowds, uh, thin crowds, you know, just you know, let's go to a baseball game for a couple of innings because. It's cheap enough, and uh, then we'll go hit the nightclubs or the beaches in San Diego or places like that. I mean, is that real that, like, 
because I argue it's not only to the fact that the Yankees are five and one. And I mean, if they, you know, I'm sorry, but those fans are the most intense in baseball. I mean, we are yeah. few, but like the Yankees fans are, and Philly, Philly's fans are crazy too, but Philly is just crazy in general. And listen, Boston people, calm the fuck down. Non-playoff Fenway crowd is not that exciting of a moment. You know what I mean? It's settled right. down a little bit. Right, unless, you know, you know, unless you're, you're, you're mounting a huge comeback. But, I mean, yeah, but it's not that crazy. In, mo- in, in the regular season, most of them aren't around when you're mounting the huge comeback. So, let's be honest. This is true. This is true. Um, yeah, so – so, it's, but a silent crowd on the road is going to make it more comfortable. That, that that they'll be fine with. I mean, it shouldn't have any kind of difference where you. I mean, no, I I don't think so. I it was just something that popped into my head. So I'm just I'm I'm glad you talked about it. Um, I I don't I don't think that's the case. I really don't. Um, I think these guys are professionals, and you know, even though Verdugo was mic'd up the other day, and uh, he said, yeah, it's weird not to be out there. He's a guy that kind of. Um, feeds off of energy um he seems like a mental patient yeah yeah he seems like he he is a a major problem is he, with it's is, really, is he like the aaron hernandez of the boston red sox i mean what's gonna happen here he, he could be the carl Crawford from the boston red sox <laughs> you know I, mean? I, I i could see that going that direction well the met you know they played the Mets and um, they did have they they did have a great game on Wednesday, which was July 29th, where um, Workman got into trouble in 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 the ninth and he actually got out of it. So uh, he walked a guy. Uh, he walked Brandon Nimmo. He walked Jeff McNeil. Uh, Pete Alonso singled, uh, and it, it it looked it looked pretty bad because it was the Red Sox were leading six to four. Um, then he struck out a dude. Then he gave up a single to third. So now, you know, the Mets are within one run. Um, gets a guy to strike out and then has that little line, little pop liner, which I was like, oh, shoot, they're going to score. And um, it's, it's nabbed in the outfield. Uh, I thought that was the Red Sox' best win. I thought it was the, the most gutsy win because – he puts too many people on base to be a real closer, you know? Of course. It's, it's scary, man. Of course. Uh, it, it, it's not ideal, but, you know, at this point, a win is a win. Um, the, Reds, the Red Sox only have three of them. Uh, so that, I thought they'd have – honestly, I thought they'd have less right now. By last podcast when we were talking, I thought by now they'd even have less wins. So I'll take three wins. Yeah, because the, ne- the next day uh, against the Mets – um, the Red Sox win four to two. Um, of all the pitched, right? Yeah. And you know that's you, you, you know you're getting your your air quote ace, and he's you know he's getting the job done. Um, you know I think I think that they're in a predicament where they don't have the starters, obviously, and the oh, pressure yeah. is all on one guy. And so far, Evaldi's handling what he needs, what he needs to get done. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Because the problem with him, though, too, though, because he's the only pitcher, and we can talk about, you know, why he's really the only pitcher in a second. But because he's the only pitcher, are we only ever going to see him go like, you know, five and a third and six? I mean, he he didn't go into the sixth inning last game, right? And he pitched well, but right. Is well, that- yeah, are they going to uh, – well, that, I think that's the thing. I mean, with, with his injury history, with um, with a shortened season, like how are they going to approach that? Because they really – they really can't hold back too much. Yeah, but, like, I, I, it seems like they're worried. Even when he's doing really well, it seems like, okay, here's your – we're stopping here. It's, they're going to let him go eight innings if things are really going well. Yep. Christian Vasquez hit two home runs in that game. Um He's been sort of an offensive powerhouse uh, for the Reds. He's, he's on fire, absolutely on fire. And we're gonna we're gonna get to him in a minute. So look, the Met, the Mets series was pretty good. I mean, you know, I I looked at the Mets series and said if we can take uh, <laughs> one out of four, I think we'll be okay. Because after losing to uh, Baltimore, 
Um, I just didn't feel confident at all. So, I mean, hey, they they did. How could you? Yeah, I mean, they I faced the Mets. They, yeah, they, and, you know, they the Mets aren't a terrible team. Actually, just uh, right before we started the podcast, uh, I guess uh, Cespedes is out. He cle- cleared out his locker. He's not playing. Forget, forget cleared out his locker. Like, he didn't tell anybody. No, he didn't tell anybody. He just didn't show up to work today. Mm-hmm. And so, like, they went out for warm-ups, and everyone's like, yo, where's where, – where's, where's Yo. <laughs> yo, yeah, yo, yo. Where's yo? And I think they call him Yo. Yeah. yeah it's a pretty cool nickname. Uh, but anyways, uh, so someone had to go – because, you know, they're, like, using the luxury boxes as their – so someone, like, went to his box, and no one's home anymore. Yep. Yeah, just uh, – Literally, middle of the night, moved out. Cleared out. Yeah, it's like he's like, "Honey, I'm going out for a, for milk and a pack of Marlboros," and she's but, like, "Okay, I'll see you in five minutes." And uh, I ain't seen you since, man. <laughs> that's, not, that's so Mets. It hurts, though. Like, of course, of course, that happens to the Mets where they're just like, "Nope, like we're not even going to see you." So this is only this is only the second craziest headline for this man, too. I, I know because he was injured by a wild boar. <laughs> like, it's like yeah, on his ranch or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so this is the second Naziest thing that's going on. And he used to be on our team. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm surprised the Red Sox didn't keep him because of the crazy. Oh, they'll sign him next hey. year. Uh, <laughs> also, he'll, he'll get his release and they'll sign him. They're gonna make, they're gonna get a minor league deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he free agent after this year. Yeah. Yeah. He's done. Like. They were talking on that, like, this was supposed to be his year to kind of prove that he's, he's healthy. And I, I mean, I think he's only played, like, 42 games in the last two years or something like that. So he's going to prove he's healthy. And, I mean, you know the way baseball is. If he could have just played this year and hit 25 home runs, 20 home runs. Oh, yeah. He, someone will give him well, eight, like, $10 million bucks for next year. For me, he's like, he's like the Kanye of baseball. <laughs> just he's out of his- He's wearing like cowboy hats. He's getting, he's like in a on a ranch in, in Texas. He's 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 not even from this country. He's from Cuba, and he's getting like gored by wild boars. But yet he's like on horses. Like it's just it, nothing makes sense. Every he, like, he wears the crossing guard color Under Armour. Yeah, <laughs> and he's good, but like he's mental, and it's just yeah, it's it, it's a it's a crazy show. So speaking of uh, dudes being out, great news for the Red Sox. Ian uh, is out for the season. Um, I saw. I mean, we all saw this coming. I mean, when they said he had complications uh, due to COVID, his um, heart. What I was like, fuck? I was like, well, that's the end of that. And then when I found out it was heart issues, I said, that's really the end of that. Like, now, we said that last week. We said, you know, the fact that they really haven't told us what exactly it is right now. Right. So it's bad. And yeah. It's bad. It's bad. And. Uh, they expect him to make a full recovery. And so health wise, it's not a big deal, but you look at the the bigger picture of this year and being around people and he just needs to go and chill out and just, just do your thing, dude, just do your thing because it's not worth it. But at the same time, you know, again, at the beginning of the season, uh, I'm sorry, at the beginning of the off season, you have pitching staff was Chris sale, um, David Price, uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, Nathan Avaldi, and you know one minor question mark. Well, you know, whenever they got Martin Perez, whatever. Okay, he's a fifth starter. Who, so who cares, right? But now you have Avaldi till he's hurt again. Yeah, you, you have Avaldi, and that's literally it. I mean, that is literally it because when we start to get into the in, into the numbers here, it's just uh, it, it, it's just a. Wait. The, the way this thing's trending, I mean, if Evaldi has the littlest kind of problem, they're going to shut him. I, I bet there's going to be a quick trigger on Mr. Nathan Evaldi to shut him down if they have to. Oh, yeah. I, w- I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I wouldn't doubt it at all because at this point, who cares? And, you know, it, it, it's funny because I was talking to – At this point, who cares? It's the fucking no, seventh I'm, game of the season. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm serious. At this, point, at this point, who cares because – Here's the thing, you know, I was on, I, I haven't been on Twitter for a while. I'm starting to get back on because the season, uh, you know, is, is going again. But, um, you know, I was on there and people are like, well, why don't they just bring up all these dudes that they have in there, you know, these, these pitching prospects that they have 
Jay Groom, Tanner Houck, and all that stuff. But the, pro the problem with that is that now they start their major league time. So we're going to make another decision based on not wanting to spend money. Right. So they, they start their service time. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, Cubs, the Cubs did this with Chris Bryant back in the day when, like, you know, Chris, Chris Bryant, uh, the, the, the Cubs were really ready to contend and they didn't bring Chris Bryant up and Chicago fans were like, ah, and then they finally brought him up after, I think it's after a certain date. And I don't know how that's been affected with COVID this year for, um, for like, you know, the bring up dates. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What I, yeah. I, I know there's a trade deadline, but I don't know where the other stuff is. Right. I, I mean, I don't know what that is, but you know, I'm not, I actually am not hating on them for that because it, it, if you, if you bring up these guys and, and by the way, all these pitching prospects, everyone's talking about, they're not ready to go yet. No, they're, they're like they're like double A kind of. They're living in double A at at least. But but if if you weren't being cheap fucks and just mailing in the season, which you should never do because you're a big market Boston goddamn Red Sox, you would have already had these people getting ready and throwing in places. So it wouldn't have been a thing. The the idea that no 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 these guys you know we don't have time to get them ready for the season that's bullshit. Okay, you're being cheap. No, yeah, I I agree with that. So let, let, let's jump a little bit since you're, you're talking about being cheap. Um, I, was going to, uh, I was going to nest this under another topic, but did you see Mookie Betts' throw? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I mean, he's done that before. So the, the two players that I've seen that have been able to make that throw have been Mookie Betts and Dwight yep. Evans. Yeah. And I'm, ta I'm not talking about on the Red Sox. I'm basically talking about all of baseball because he was in the corner. Maybe Vlad Guerrero, but it's, it's that kind of throw. You know, yeah. Cannon, dude. Yeah, and, and, and I've seen Vlad make some insane throws, but like – But he also sometimes throws it, you know. Right, he throws up, it in his stand. Up off the backstop, exactly. Yeah. I mean, with, with consistency, and, I, you know, I just remember Dwight Evans, and we talked about this on this podcast the, in the early days. Um, but you know, the best throw I've ever seen was Dwight Evans going into the right field corner at Oakland County uh, Coliseum. Yes. And he, he spun around and he threw a bullet that was, I mean, li you're literally talking about like 300 feet away. I mean, and he just, and he, and, and I think it was like Carney Lansford was playing third base. And it's okay. like, Red Sox, Red Sox tied it up. Devers hit three, three. Nice. Excellent. All right, good. So De Devers is getting hot. We're going to talk about him in a minute. But, yeah, I mean, when I saw that throw, you know, and then, of course, like Twitter goes, uh, Twitter goes mental. Uh, I can't believe how you let this guy go. And I really don't believe the Red Sox let this guy go. This was the – this has to be up there with one of the most – unpopular decisions the Red Sox. I mean, this is this is like Ruthian. Yeah, but it's a little revisionist history, though, because he wasn't going to take the contract. The contract that he got, the 13 years, three, including this year, so it ends up being like 380, including this year, 367, whatever, you know how you're looking at it, 12 yep. years, 13 years. He wasn't going to take that contract. He won, what, 12 years, 420 was his opening with the Red Sox, which yeah. – Honestly, I think it's one of those, like, oh, you want me to say, Yeah, I'll say a billion dollars. Yeah. You know, a gajillion. So, yeah, $11 million. <laughs> so, I don't I – just, I just don't understand. People keep comparing it. I'm – ooh, I don't want to do that. People keep – I'm doing the clap talk. People keep <laughs> comparing it. Yeah, I, I'm not a clap talk. No, no, no. But people keep comparing it to what he's getting now, and I don't think he was accepting that. Yeah, I just don't understand – like, I understand pitting – you know, I understand free agency. Like, yeah. like okay, like, I want teams to compete for me. If you're going to stay, you take less. That, that's free agency. Right. I, I just don't understand why it's it, – it can't be like, oh, I'll, I'll just go back. I'm like, I really like it here. Like, I'm going to go back to the same team. I don't understand why the Red Sox can't just be like, okay, like, you know, what's, what's your top offer so far? 
And then, they, you know, the Dodgers be but, like, well, it's this. And then, you know, you'd be like, okay, well, we're going to pay you more than that. Because you never got that. But Red Sox. Mookie Betts clearly didn't want that to happen because he took a deal in the season. Yeah. Well, we're when, gonna you t- when, you sign, when you sign an extension like that, no other team has the right to match it. You know what I mean? Like, he's not supposed oh, to. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. But, but. You, you know, want to play here. You accept that. I'm going to, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk to you about a little, some contract stuff that we talked about two years ago that is coming back to haunt our asses. Okay. This year in a little bit, but all right. So we're going to do who's hot, who's not. Let's go. Okay. So uh, speaking of the Mets series, we're not going to break it down play by play because hopefully uh, everyone's watched the games. Um, so we, we already, you know, we covered the Baltimore series last year. Don't want to kind of revisit that. The Yankee series is still going on. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, what do we get? Man on first. All right. We'll see what happens. Um, so who's hot in the Mets series? Vasquez. On fire. Three thirty Hits 333 for the series. Yeah. Michael Chavis, only two games of the Mets series, but hits 333. Yeah, uh, R- Raphael Devers, which is good to see him, uh, uh, you know, start to swing the bat well. He's at 308. Kevin Pillar keeps keeps going on. Now the outfield is all on a rotation, yeah. so it's like it's you know it really is. It, it's like Pilar sits out one day, Benintendi sits out one day, JBJ sits out one day, Verdugo sits out one day, and they and they mix in Pilar, and I like that. I, I have no no hatred for that. Oh. Uh, Mitch Moreland hit 400, right, for the series. Um, now, let me ask you a question, Andy. Are so, those the guys that you want to be super successful? Because I just said Vasquez, Chavis, Devers, Pilar, and Mitch Moreland. Are those yeah. your studs, Andy? Well, I mean, they're not named the end of all guys. They're uh... – not named J.D. Martinez. So, it's – I mean, it's – I guess you want everyone hitting well, but there are other people missing from that that group, definitely, what you're talking about. I mean, and even some of the rap Devers, hopefully it's a good thing going. It's, I mean, it's still for the season puts them at what, like 182 or something like that. So, I mean, yeah. it's not you – know. No, I mean, I, I – you know, I, I count Devers as one of those guys that you need to rely on. No, he's one of your stars. He has to be. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, there's talk right now, though. There's, talk, I mean, it's early in the season. The, the national broadcasters and the local. I mean, the the amount of dick sucking going on for Vasquez right now is out of control. He just got a base hit. Great games, uh, yeah. And they're talking about him being the best catch, the best catcher in, in in at least the American League right now. They, they really are. Just people are in love with him right now. Yeah, and that's that. That's a good thing because, of course, he's known for his, his defense. And last year, he really picked it up. All right, so we do a little meh. In the middle, which is uh, Peraza. He's hitting 250. Okay. Um, ice cold. Ice cold. Ice cold. Xander, 167. Yeah. Uh, Benny. Got hit a home run tonight, so hopefully that yeah. gives home runs in the season. And, and we'll, we'll – before we get into the Yankees series, I will say this, uh, because his defense in the Yankees series has been – Absolutely phenomenal. He has made so many great plays. A lot of effort plays. Looks like he, he's – I look across baseball. Right? Heads up plays. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like – it's just he's he's engaged, and that's what you want to see. Which which I'm not – and just watching regular games across baseball, I'm not seeing players who are engaged. It really – it seems mm-hmm. like just from here to there, it seems like – Distraction teams, and – Teams are getting down by two or three runs. They're mailing things in early. It just um, – Agreed. It does not sound great. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so Benny is at two twenty two. He's the hottest uh, of the cold of the cold guys. Yeah, that that, that gets him to a point oh eight three for the season. Yeah. No. He, yeah. He's um. Yeah. He's doing great. He gets struck out ten times this season already. Okay. And we talked about right. it last week. The big knee. And it, the second we talked about it too, I watched it like the, that night when we watched. I, I was watching it. On the knee with the big swing. He keeps, keeps doing that. Dropping to the knee. I don't know what that is. I think uh, Jackie Bradley, after, you know, starting off the season, first three games hitting like 600, goes into the Mets series and hits 111, which is – which is Remembered what, his name was Jackie Bradley. He went, oh, my bad. Uh, oh, that's who he is, right? 
Uh, Alex Verdugo, 143. You don't want to see that from him. He's still got a, a plus 300 average right now. But, yeah, I mean, there's your Mookie Betts replacement, air quotes. Uh, and I think this is the worst case scenario. J.D. Martinez, um, just, you know, 125. Didn't hit at all. No home runs. Got a double tonight. But he seems a little – he's – he seems like he's he's swinging out a lot of air. It seems like, yeah, and and you know, um, if you look at the Red Sox um, WAR leaders, because you know one of my favorite things to do is go into Baseball Reference and you know kind of go through the stuff. WAR, yeah, and just and just see what's up. All right, um, you, here's your here's your WAR leaders. Christian Vasquez number one. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, I gotta get their wars because this is ridiculous. Because the wars aren't that good, but <laughs> I mean, it's like point zeros. I know they see, the season is young, zero point seven. So it's Vasky at number one. Yeah. Kevin Pillar number two, point five. Avaldi point four. That's no surprise. He's their best pitcher. Yep. It's not even close. They got a lot of pitchers. Um, yeah. Uh, Chris Mazza, who we're gonna talk about in a second. That's your new boyfriend. Yeah. That's my new boyfriend. It, well, it, it, well. It's no surprise that he's my new boyfriend because he wears number 22, which was Porcello's old number. So I mean, there you go. You know, who got, I think he gave up like 600 home runs the other day. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not doing too bad. Step off of him. Step off. <laughs> a minute. <laughs> All right. So look, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to drag this out. So it's like Mazza is fourth, Hembry, Verdugo, Moreland, Valdez, JBJ, Barnes, Plowecki. And Workman. So there's no Bogarts. No. There's no JD Martinez. Uh, there's no uh, there's no Devers. So, I mean, you hope that you look at this you look at this start, and you and you know you say, well, we're three and six or whatever, and this is a disaster. But ultimately, your offensive guys aren't contributing. No, they really – it's not this whole, you know, they still got a wagon on offense. They're going to crush the ball. I guess so, but it's yeah. not happening yet, no. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, that's not how you want to win games. You never want to win games crushing balls. You no. always want to win games with good pitching. But I think realistically, analytically, breaking down why they've been so bad, it's because they really haven't been hitting either. No. Their lineup at times every game should be able to get some bunches of hits. Right. You know what I mean? And there's no, there's no, there's no, yeah, people aren't getting on base and there's no clutch hitting. I looked at a stat for Verdugo. Do you know how many times he's been up with uh, an opportunity to drive in runs? How many? Zero? Zero. Zero point zero. Yeah, you know, every time he's up, he's up and like, you know, he's got a couple base hits, whatever, but. <laughs> not good. I mean, come on. I mean, that's just like not a lot. All right. So, in any case, let's move on to uh, end of the third inning. Red Sox up five. Middle of the third. Red Sox up five three. Excellent. Good news. We get it. We get it. Because listen, if we don't, the Red Sox play the Yankees. And again, you want to talk about that 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 fan factor. But they, you know, they play the Yankees. You know, whatever it is, uh, ten times uh, versus three times or whatever. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you, you got to get a couple of wins in Yankee Stadium. They were awful in Yankee Stadium last year. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. So, speaking of the Yankees, I was watching a little bit of the game on Friday. I watched a little bit of the game yesterday. I'm watching the game now. Andy, the Yankees have two players that I really wanted. Do you remember who they were? Um, the second baseman. Yep. DJ LeMahieu. Pitcher. And a pitcher with a call? Ottavino. Oh, Ottavino, yeah. Uh, and that was after the Red Sox won the World Series. I think both those dudes were free agents. The so, LeMahieu thing you were really big on. And when they they, they had – They've had a huge hole at second base for a long time. Oh, I wanted I wanted LeMahieu, I wanted them to trade for him in the middle of the 2018 season. Instead, they got um, Ian Kinsler. Yeah, yeah as soon as um, yeah, 
They yep. still got they still got the job done, but I wanted them to get uh, LeMayhew, and you know, ultimately, who knows what would have happened because he was a free agent. But um, since 2018, mid 2018, and his free agent year, LeMayhew, 305, 42 home runs. He's won a Gold Glove, fourth in MVP voting, uh, and he's won a Silver Slugger award. For a second baseman, man. Woo! And uh, by the way, he, he plays all over. By the way, he plays second. He plays short. He's uh, he played first base last night, I believe, at one point. But he would be the Red Sox second baseman. He would be, yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. Go. What do you think his salary is? He signed signed, signed as a free agent with the New York Yankees for I believe I believe it was three years and an option to get like twelve a year. He does. You're right on point. Look at that. 12 a year. Is that a lot of money? That's almost like a entry-level good player contract. Major I league. mean, that's, so that's, a, that's a second contract. You're a good player. Yeah. Exactly. Like, hey, man, like that's a pat, that's a pat in the ass, right? There are tons, like, of, hey, man, you're, there are you, tons of shitheads in Major League Baseball making $12 million. You, you did great in Colorado. Um, you, you know, you, you were an up-and-coming player. Now's your time to shine because I really think he's one of these guys who wanted the spotlight, wanted to be on a winning team. Some of these guys thrive with that. $12 million a year for a guy like him is oh. nothing. Nothing. We could have had that dude for $12 million a year. Give me a freaking break. Kinsler. Yeah. Well, Ottavino, right? Yep. Right now, uh, 1.83 ERA, 11.5 strikeouts per nine. Uh, actually, uh, not right now. I think this is time with the Yankees. Okay. He's getting less than – now, he's not a closer. Okay. He's like, oh. a, set, he's like a setup guy. Um, he's making less than LeMayhew in the really? bullpen. In the bullpen, and he's an arm. And I saw him pitch the other day, and, you know, I was like, this guy is nasty, and Eck was saying it. it, it it's just like – he makes $9 million a year. Guys, that's 12, 12 million plus 9 million. That's like 21, you know. It's it's more than yeah, it's, check, it, it's <laughs> hashtag math. It's it's, <laughs> it's more than, but not that much of the half of David Price's salary that we're paying the Dodgers. Oh, that hurts. We just got to be smarter, man. They're just – they're out there. Like, these, the good players are out there. We have to be smarter, which brings me to my question to you. Is the Evaldi contract – I'm sorry, but the Evaldi contract is still too much. But go ahead. The, you're absolutely right. But I'm going to tell you right now, on, on, on August 2nd, 2020, that contract is the best contract in baseball. That's what you that got. That's we got. Yeah, best one you got. <laughs> But um, let, let me ask you this. Is any of this High and Bloom's fault this year, do you think? No. I don't think he really has any control over this year. I think he was told that he needs to – I think the plan was to, he needs to kind of draft, and he, he's, his concentration is to get some young people to replenish the minor leagues. Um, and if there's any kind of free agents out there – we can discuss it, but I don't think really. No, nah, I don't think he's allowed to spend. What, I mean, what, what could be his fault? Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, things were in place. Uh, you know, unless did, did he make the Evaldi contract? No, that was Dombrowski. No, that was Dombrowski. I mean, what has he done? And then Chris, once once COVID was evident, yeah. Right? They that literally like two days later they got Chris Sale under the knife. Yeah, because they because they knew they were like this ain't gonna happen. So I mean he you know you would have had Martin, like Martin had, Perez. Yeah, my Martin Perez is a scrap heap thing that all GMs do. You know, but like there, there was there were seven of him. He just, he just picked Martin Perez. He could have right. picked this guy or that guy. It could have could have picked anyone. Um. You know, but I look at – going back to what you said about Garrett Cole. So, Garrett Cole has two wins so far. Um, you know, he's exactly what they thought he was going to be. He's pitching pretty well. 
Yeah. But 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 here's the thing. Okay. So the Yankees team ERA is 3.57. The Red Sox uh are 5 plus. And it's like 5.3 something, right? But who do you think has the higher team average? Batting average? I'd assume it'd be the Yankees. I, I, you're asking me, so I, I guess I'm wrong. It's it, it, it's not, and I could not believe that. So we, the Red Sox are – the team batting average before today was 256. Yankees, 235 as a team. But their, their studs are doing what – it's LeMahieu, Judge, and Stanton. Yeah. Are, are doing what they need to do. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, back to the old Glenn Orway adage, right? It's bitching, bitching, bitching. It, it really is. And I, I can't believe – I got to give the Red Sox credit. When whoa, we, whoa, 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 whoa. We're doing that this year? No, what's up? We're giving the Red Sox credit about anything this year? Well, I, I, I was just about to say, I'm giving the Red Sox credit because I thought – that we were going to go into this Yankee series and these games were, they, it was going to be like 15 to three, like 17 to two. Uh, you're going to see literally, you're going to see uh, position p- uh, players pitch like that. that that's what yeah, I, I, but this goes to show you though, how much of a wagon the Yankees really are. Cause th- that, that's not going to be their, their season team batting average. You know what I mean? No, no. Overall they're going to hit better. So if they get their batting average up to like, you know, a, a two, two sixty, two fifty eight, 58, something like that, they're going to be destroying teams. Oh, and and they're, if their pitchers stay healthy, they're going to be just, Chapman's coming back soon. Yep. Uh, I think he was, I think today. He, well, he, he's getting back into throwing. He's not. Oh, oh okay. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I heard some about him today. He's still got to do like a simulated kind of thing and stuff like that. But, I mean, so they're not even firing on all, all, all cylinders and they're smashing teams. Yeah, it's unreal. It's unreal. Um, they're they're, they're going to be fine. I, I think I think it's going to be a Dodgers-Yankees World Series. I really do. Because none of those teams have been hit with the COVID yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, so there are more teams. Oh, uh, oh! Before we go to the uh, before we go to the COVID, I just want to say uh, say one thing. Saturday night's game, Chris Mazza took the mound for the Red Sox. He had a mullet flowing. He had a goatee. He had a blue and red glove. Ugh. He had the the high pants and the stirrups the douchebag stirrups yeah. old school stirrups Ugh. uh best thing about 2020 i tweeted it out i said his his look is 15 out of 10 uh i mean he just looked he looked like a you know like a cross between randy johnson and uh who's that fat dude oh uh rod, rod beck he's skinny i mean chris Maz is skinny but he looked like he just looked like he looked like a skinny rod beck and and like a slash of like Randy Johnson out there, and he pitched pretty effectively. Yeah, uh, Maz has got a great. Uh, yeah, I think I don't. I think he's got a. He's got a sub one ERA, I believe. So he's, made, he's made two appearances. I think he's given up one run, maybe. Is yep. he, he's good. He looks yeah. great. So I tweet that out, and Mazza, I wake up the next morning. Mazza likes it. I don't even tag he's a him. Mark I don't even tag him in the thing. He just found it. He's looking for himself. He's doing. Yes, it. he's typing in his own name. He's, he's like, he's like, I, I like what this guy said about me. Exactly. It's true. It's the best thing about 2020. I say yeah. ask him for tickets, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, can ask him. Ask <laughs> five, him four, five four, four red. Like, Yankees got to run, by the way. What's that? Five four. Yankees got to run. Okay. Oh, it's five five. They just got another run. Oh, I, I'm 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 on my phone, so you're ahead of me. Yeah, no surprises there. No, no surprises there. Anywho, uh, so yeah, Maz's look was great. So any anyway, more teams are getting the COVID. Uh, most specifically, the Phillies had a couple of had a couple of guys. Uh, it's running through the Cardinals organization now. Well, the Mar- yeah, let's go. We'll go back just for people. It, it starts with the Marlins. Yeah. Rumor being that the Marlins did preseason in Atlanta, that a bunch of dudes went out to the – we're going to call them bars. We're going to call them clubs. However, it is Atlanta, and you know exactly where they're going. From what I hear, some of the best hot wings on the planet are in Atlanta strip clubs. This, I, I, I don't 
this is like three different sources. There's a guy from the NBA who had to go to a funeral in Atlanta and he got caught going. He said, no, no, no. Cause they're like, you had to go to the strip club. He said, no, no, you understand. It's the best wings in the planet. Yeah. So this has been said a few times now. So I guess it's for real. Hey, dirty, dirty South. We ball and all. Like, now the Phillies, it's it, no players have tested positive because they, they went and played the Phillies. And there are rumors that, that some of those fucking Marlins knew they were positive and still played that game. Yeah. That's, that's been spoken a little bit to the coach. No, that, I mean, that could be a really major situation. What do you do if the, if the coach knew somebody was positive and he still let them play, you kind of got to fire the coach, don't you? You, you got to, I, I mean, I would say like you guys are out. The Marlins, so who cares? But you got to fire the coach, right? Yeah. I, think, him well, I mean, you got you to. Baseball needs to suspend him. You got to do big sanctions. I mean, you look at what happened with Joe Kelly throwing at the Astros, right? Yeah. This past week. And, and what did, like, uh, what did uh, uh, Caribou Street tweeted? Uh, you know, Joe Kelly's got an eight, eight game more suspension than any player on the Astros. Right. For and D- Dave Roberts got suspended too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, none of the none of the Astros got suspended for cheating, yeah. but Joe Kelly's thrown at him, and then the manager gets the repercussions as well. I mean, now, they got plugged in the next game against the Nationals, the next series against the Nationals. He gets plugged, and then he gets thrown out trying to steal second base. <laughs> but anyways, back to the COVID. So the Marlins, who some of them reportedly knew they were fucking infected, play the game, play the games against the Phillies. The Phillies game, now only two staff person have tested or three, like, not players. And they think they might be false positives. They're being very careful with the Phillies is what they say. Right. But now, completely independent of this situation, we also have what? The Cardinals. The Cardinals. Who, have you heard the rumors? I have not. And these are just rumors. They could be completely wrong. No one's going to fact check me, so I really don't care. I mean, sue me. I have nothing. Um, the word is you get two players at least who have tested positive, more, maybe three, more are expected, and there's rumors that some of them were seen at a casino in, in, the, in the area the night before or a, a, before, a week before, something like that. So, I listen, the, uh, the commissioner's stepping up and, and saying finally to the union, like, dude, you guys need to behave. Because David Price comes out with that tweet. First of all, David, you're not playing this year. You, right. you really got to kind of just stay out of it. Right. You chose not to play. That's your right. That's fine. We're not going to call you a complete pussy. All right. That's fine. I didn't say it. I'm not going to. Some, some people probably are saying that David Price is just a shell of a man, as he's proven his entire career. He's had a couple decent innings in, in the playoffs. Besides that, he's been dog shit. Some people will say that. I'm not saying that. You're not. No. Okay. Okay, he just are wants you, to. Are you implying it? Yeah, he wants to just stay <laughs> home and and caress the asshole of his, his new little doggy or whatever he's doing. Okay, but anyways, I didn't say that. But he comes out with this huge thing about all oh, major league baseball. They're they're not protected. If guys are gonna go out, what, what what can major league baseball do anything different that they're doing right now? Right. Well, I mean, Man Manfred has has told Tony Clark, I guess. That he wants a compliance officer. They basically want a, a COVID compliance officer for every team. So get your like, shit together, is what like, like a chaperone. Yeah, like if it, like if we're gonna do this, and you guys want to get paid your money, you can't be going to strip clubs. You can't be going out to get wings at the at the hot spot, even if it is a strip club. You you know you can't be going to casinos. You know, you. I know that. I know that you guys have side pieces in all these cities and everything else. You cannot see them and go out and party and everything else. No. Because, you know, from what I what I've read about this stuff, and I I don't pay too much attention to it. The the biggest downfall for spreading this shit are house parties and bars. Yeah. Like where bars where people are like, hey, 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 and they're like, this, like they're yeah. licking each other, and it's just gross. And it's and like, the more, I mean, come on, we've all been there. The more you drink, the closer you get. It just yeah, and yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, spitting all over the place. I've spit yeah. on plenty of people, and I've probably even paid a few people to spit on me. But anyway, <laughs> um, so it's, I, I can't confirm or deny. 
But um, what was it my mouth? We don't know. But anyways, uh, <laughs> it's it's insane that these guys and they didn't want to do a bubble. And we'll yep. see, man. Yeah, and it, well, I mean that's the thing. And then Manfred sort of backed off that a little bit. I think it was today, or it was either today or yesterday. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we we call every day 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 here. It's like what day? Yeah, it's day day. Because I, I haven't I haven't gone into my job since March 16th, so I don't know what that. Oh wow, right? Yeah. Whatever, 13th, <laughs> whatever it's been. But um, but yeah, I mean, you know, they have to they have to take responsibility for their actions. They're 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 professionals, and I know they're they're young and they want they want to party. I mean, that's the dream, right? You're a major league baseball player. I mean, you know, you're just like girls, like girls. For those of you who are listening on audio, I'm doing the fishing thing that guys do where they cast the line out and they reel. That was, that was your move. And they want, they, no, that was not my move. That's your move. My move was like, Hey, how you doing? That explains why you were a virgin at 24. Okay. I get it. I get it. (laughs) <laughs> fake news anyway <laughs> all right so andy i'm going to talk to you about the uh i'm going to talk to you about the guy who i think is going to single-handedly save baseball really yes. one guy is going to save baseball. one there's going to be one man it's not rob manfred clearly um there's one man this week who made some baseball news that kind of flew under the radar uh, and I think he is going to save baseball um, for everyone. He's going to make baseball great again. And uh, he's going to make baseball fun again. And he is going to have input on how Major League Baseball moves forward uh, in the coming years. Uh, COVID, COVID aside, you know, when the COVID thing's over, uh, hopefully next year, but who knows. Magic Johnson bought another team. <laughs> right, well – you're 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 lukewarm because it's not someone who you would associate with baseball. I know who it is. I just figured it out. Who is it? It is a quarterback. It is. Yeah, I saw it. Yes. Yeah. So proud of you. I'm I'm proud of you. Seriously, that's awesome. Yeah, that. I it out. So for those of you who don't know, Patrick Mahomes the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. Darling of the who, NFL. Who has, I mean, technically, he's been in the league t- uh, since 2017. He only played one game that year. But in his two full years as a starter, 2018-2019, he has won an NFC championship and a Super Bowl, which, you know, we know that the uh, uh, Patriot, uh, I'm sorry, uh, AFC championship, in a Super Bowl, we all know that the Patriots uh, beat beat the Chiefs uh, two years ago, um, and then uh, they, you know, the, the Chiefs won this year. But he is now uh, a stakeholder, an owner of the Kansas City Royals. That's right. His, his father was a pitcher in Major League Baseball, pitched for the Red Sox for 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 a short time. He was a journeyman pitcher. But he has been, you know, he says, I've been around baseball my whole life. I love baseball. I wanted in. There was a opportunity. I think George Brett is one of the stakeholders in the Royals. So he is now. A lot of clear heads at that. Uh, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's now a part owner of the Kansas City Royals. Being a second year quarterback in the NFL. He already owns a baseball team. At least this, partially. This is what baseball needs. Well, yeah, and it, and and you know what's what's his contract for? Like, right, half a billion dollars, I believe. With yeah, no, he got a gigantic deal. So, hey, guys, making some investments. So he's making. He's already making. He's like, I'm going to buy a baseball team, and you don't <laughs> even have to buy a good baseball team because there's revenue sharing. So, no matter what, you're going to get paid. Right, and I mean, you know, I I would argue that Kansas City. I mean, growing up when we were growing up, Kansas City was a dynasty, man. They were they were in it all the time. And then you know they 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 won a couple of uh, won a couple of World Series and then they won the 2015 World Series, but I think he's just gonna, I think he's gonna take this to a new level. I think he's gonna blow it up. I think he's gonna use his platform to 
talk about baseball. And I think he's going to be one of the guys in these meetings, these owners meetings that is going to be like, okay, everyone's going to be like, well, I don't know if we can do that. Maybe in 40 years, we can look at it, you know, and he's going to be like, Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we do it now? Cause who freaking cares? Um, really? All right. You're giving really, this I, a lot of credit. We'll see. I, I, I really do. I you think can throw a football. So he must be able to, you know, run companies. Well, here's the thing, right? If he puts himself out there, and he's like baseball, baseball, baseball. Obviously, he's not going to do it during the football season, but during the during the baseball season, a normal baseball season, he's out there at games. He's out there tweeting. He's out there doing his thing. They could put some eyeballs. Essentially, you're going to have a guy who, who he was drafted by the way. He was drafted. Yes, he was uh, yeah. drafted by the Tigers, I believe, in 2014. You think he'll do like a Jordan thing and like like if the team's in trouble, he'll start playing? <laughs> yeah maybe pull like a dion yeah a bo jackson style um you know what that that's interesting <laughs> i didn't even think about that i mean i don't know what his football i'm sure his football contract is like don't even like get on a skateboard well, i mean it's been a lot we'll see i mean the major league baseball it's been a while for him but, but i just think that's a positive thing as a voice for baseball because wow. i would i would argue that he that he might be, like, just the hottest name in sports. Listen, anytime we can get younger human beings in ownership positions with Major League Baseball, it's a good thing. Because, you know, the average age has got to be, like, 73 yeah. of all, all owners. So, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. He's, he's young. He's biracial. Like, it's, it's the perfect storm of awesomeness. Great Q rating. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. You know, he's talented. He's um, – his girlfriend makes weird TikToks. She, she, uh, <laughs> she sucks. But I and think, the brother. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I think I think that's it. I mean, his dad played, obviously. Just I mentioned that. I think he's I think he's gonna make it. I think he's gonna make it happen. I, I can't wait to see what happens with this. All right, two things for you. Yes. One, how do you feel about the seven innings double headers? Love it. Love it, right? Yep. I think it's a good thing. I think it's what, I, I, like, we've been talking about this. Whatever it takes to get games in, listen, if, if it's good seven-inning games, maybe we do this more often. This is, this is the year to experiment. And, they, yep. and to baseball's credit, they are doing it. Because the other day, I think you had your first man on second walk-off. Yep. I forgot who exactly that. Okay, come here for a sec. Okay, do you want to show Andy? No? All right. Well, he wanted to – he knew he was talking, so there's your little joker. Oh, cool. Little joker thing. All right. Bad radio, but whatever. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think, you know, this is the year to do it. This is the year to do it. Um, experiment with everything. The DH, the, the runners on. You know, they just had, they just had the first uh, – they just had the first walk-off um, guy on second base. Yeah. And, and the game ended in, I believe it was – 13 innings, I think, I want to say. Still too long, but yep. Agreed, still too long, but at least it wasn't 18 innings. Okay, final question? Yep. We're, we're, we're running late here. Um, how many games are the Red Sox going to win this year? Well, every week we'll do this. All right, so how many wins do they have now? Three? Yep. <laughs> And it's been a little over a week. And what's it's been now? It's still five five. They won't win this one. Um, yeah, I can't see him. I, I I mean, again, I can't I can't see him winning thirty games. So I'm going to say twenty five. That's low. And, <laughs> That's bad. But you know, you know, it was wicked funny when I went on to uh, Baseball Reference today. Their chances of making the playoff was still over 50%. It was like, it was close to 52 because, because half the league, over half the league is making the playoffs. 25 wins gets them maybe like three games out of the playoffs. Maybe. Yeah, pretty close. Maybe, maybe it, it, if things go crazy, maybe they're it. So we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Wow. We, we shall see. All right. So episode 83 is in the books and uh, by five, bottom of the fourth. Yep. Five five bottom of the fourth. Nice play there. Is he out or is he safe? Aaron Judge is destroying the Red Sox. Uh, he is either hitting home runs or on base. It's it's brutal. So 
Uh, Andy, good to see you. We All right. are the Loaded on Lands Down Red Sox Baseball Podcast. This is episode 83, and it is in the books. Thank you for listening. You can listen to us on Spotify and iTunes and, of course, YouTube. My YouTube channel is Mark Chikaris, C-H-E-K-A-R-E-S, and we will see you next week. All right, peace.